Okay, wow, cool. We're going live. Welcome to Familiar um, for Saturday, May 4th, 2019. I've started to want to like date, um, date stamp these videos because it'll be pretty cool to, um, to look back and, uh, and you know, um, have like a, like a specific date and time that something happened. Um, okay. So let's get into it. Um, my first things first is that, um, welcome and we're coming from live from downtown Toronto, beautiful Parkdale. Um, this time we're talking about the nines and the hermit. And, um, I think the next edition will probably be at the new moon in, um, in June. I don't know when that is yet. I think it's, um, if this is, uh, the 4th, then the new moon in June will probably be around the 4th, uh, the 3rd of the 4th. So check back in at the group and, uh, we'll make sure that you know. Um, and first things first, um, I just wanted to acknowledge that my apartment and where I live, work, and play is situated upon traditional territories. Um, they include the Wendat, the Anishtabek Nation, um, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Mississaugas of the First, New First, um, New Credit First Nations, and the Métis Nation. Um, the territory was the subject of the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, which was an agreement between the Iroquois Confederacy and the Confederacy of the Ojibwe and the Allied Nations to peaceably share and care for the researches, uh, resources around the Great Lakes. Um, it was signed for this partic particular parcel of land collectively referred to as the Toronto Purchase. Um, I also recognize the enduring presence of Aboriginal peoples on this land, and I just wanted to really, um, really extend a hand, um, a friendship hand, because, you know, a lot of people um, tend to think these days that Natives um, are still, you know, running around in bucks again and, you know, whatever, or that they all, um, died off or something, but there was a genocide that was perpetrated against those peoples. And, uh, even today, um, I wanted to recognize the, uh, Unistotin people of Northern BC who are fighting, um, a natural gas pipeline that, um, uh, has been proposed to go through their land. Um, that's just messed up because they're unceded territories, which means that the native people of the land did not give up ownership of their land. And, you know, the government is just trying to plow through with a pipeline, and that's just messed up. So I wanted to just recognize that um, the native peoples of this land, who are the uh, rightful owners and caretakers of it, are really getting messed up um, these days. And I really respect um, and cherish their presence on the land. And I don't want that to just... Uh, I didn't want to do just read... Um, you know, a canned, um, acknowledgement. I just wanted to, um, to really like, you know, uh, go above and beyond just what's written on the paper because it's more than that. Um, also, um, in case you were into digital currency, um, this is my Litecoin address. I do accept Litecoin. Um, which is actually gaining some uh, massive support these days, which I think is pretty awesome. Um, if you're interested in um, altcoins and the, um, the entire uh, uh, cryptocurrency movement, um, you can get into Andreas Antonopoulos. He is so interesting to listen to when he talks, and he's very inspiring as well. Um, this is my Bitcoin address. So you can hook me up at the Bitcoin or rewind the replay for the Litecoin address and hook me up with a couple coins here and there because I do accept those payments. All right, so um, I'm just checking it out. It looks like, yeah, it looks like we're going live. Um, I can take off, take off my sound and, oh, look, it's actually happening. So that's pretty cool and... There's no feedback, so that's pretty interesting. So I got it on my computer right here. Um, I have Twitter up and running, so if you chime in, I will definitely get all of your messages. Um, if uh, if if you had something to say, we could totally like 
uh, open up the floor. Um, just give me a comment. It says start a watch party. Uh, Grandma doesn't really know how to work all of this technology, but we'll figure it out. Um, so welcome to Familiar, um, the Tarot Study Group. Um, my name is Sonia, and um, I was given my first deck of tarot cards when I was nine years old from my sister. It was called the Tarot of Witches. And um, it's a really difficult looking deck. Like it is, all it is is, um, you know, five swords and then that's your picture and that's all you have to go on. So I never was able to actually learn the tarot. Um, I've always kind of been an outsider with it. Um, I can't really afford lessons, but from time to time I can afford books. And it looks like you can't really see behind me, but maybe I can show you. Um, I do have a bunch of books up on the shelf over there, um, and other junk laying around, but, um, I basically every week I compile the information from my books and from the internet and I just, I teach so that I can learn, um, basically, and I always think that, um, Every deck has a different kind of take on the tarot, and um, every person has a different take on it as well. So I think, uh, I really do encourage um, collaboration and commenting, because I think it just makes for, it makes for better learning. So please chime in. I've got my Twitter notifications on. I've got my Facebook notifications on and after this is done we I will be putting it on YouTube unfortunately I can't um, stream live on YouTube right now because I I mean I'm just a humble tarot student and I only have like a couple subscribers and YouTube really does work as hard as they can to make sure that um, they're making money um, so um, if anybody is tuning in, let me know if you can hear me okay. I hope so. I don't, like, Babushka doesn't quite know how this technology is working, and I'm not really sure if the sound is up enough, so just, you know, let me know. All right, let's get into it. So, um, what I generally do is I, um, I, uh, choose, um, a set of five cards, um, for the teaching because um, they're all connected numerologically which makes me have a problem with certain decks because they they mess with the numerology and I'm not really cool with that so um, oh, it looks like that deck I messed up a little bit so today is the hermit and this is my um, iridescent version of the tarot deck um, it's just the, this one is, um, in particular is just the Rider weight. Uh, I happen to like this deck a lot. Um, it was really super inexpensive on eBay. Um, so there's that. And this is the Tarot Illuminati. Um, really interesting, uh, live, uh, live pictures and Photoshop deck. Really cool. Um, I have, I'm working with the, um, Egyptian tarot as well. That's, uh, Egyptian tarot, and we were just looking at the, um, the iridescent tarot. Um, so the Egyptian tarot from this, this pack is this guy, this is the hermit. Um, I've tried to bookmark all of my pages this time so that it, I won't end up being a like total crap show trying to dig out cards for you. Um, another another favorite of mine is the, um, the Yukioa deck and it looks like this one yeah okay there we go I messed that up a little okay so it's the Yukioa deck from um, US Games I think this is a reprint um, so there is their hermit and what else oh I have patch tarot which is a um, independent uh, kind of low well I guess I wouldn't even say low budget these days but an independent um, uh, company in um, in I think they're in Winnipeg but they're they are out west in Canada they're called spirit science and this is their patch tarot. 
my grievance is that they messed with the numerology. So pff, bear with me on that. But the the pictures are amazing. The cards are like the new new edition of the cards are really nice. They're smooth as all get out. And they're a really nice size for my hands because tarot decks tend to be kind of large. And my Madrina deck, um, pardon me, I can't roll my R's. I'm not, not that talented. This is my um, Santa Muerte deck, which really uh, is what brought me back into tarot recently. Um, the This is all illustrator. Um, I think all of the drawings are illustrator based and it's by an artist called... Um, Fabio Listriani absolutely amazing art and um, if you're if you're dark and brooding like I am it's a really great deck so these are the decks that I'm working with today um, I'm just gonna put away my iridescent one or actually if you give me a moment I'm gonna just look for the nine it looks like I pulled out a 19 instead um, I pulled out the sun, which is a good card. It's a good jumper to have if you're going to have a jumper. So it looks like I am missing the nine of cups. So give me just a moment. Here I was trying to be all, all super organized for you, and it turns out that I'm still a bit of a spaz who doesn't have her stuff together. Um... I know we're not supposed to have dead air in broadcasting, but ah, here we go. Found them. All right, so that's the guy we were looking for. These ones are going back in the box. Thanks for coming out. Let's get this on. Let's get this wagon rolling down the road. Um, I unfortunately I don't have the box for my Tarot Illuminati. I threw it out, um, which is you know one of those regrets in life. Oh, um, and I almost forgot. Let me pull it up for you guys. Um, I have a bunch of cheat sheets for you. I know that's what you guys are waiting for. Um, I do appreciate you tuning in and, um, uh, and interacting though. Uh, I tend to just be talking to myself, which I guess is fine. Um, you guys can just, uh, put this on in the background and, um, <laughs> and vibe out to it. Uh, learn what you can. There we go. I'm just up at putting the link up right now for you guys to uh, the for the Google Drive and uh, and up on Twitter. Sorry, I know this is a lot of preamble. I'll be ready to ready to rock in a second. It's actually much less uh, disorganized and all over the place than it was last time. Um, so there we go. Twitter's good to go. We are up and running. All right, cool. I was just checking for comments. We got none yet, but that's all right. I believe in you guys. I know you're with me. Um, okay, so let's get started. So um, nine. Uh, there you go. Before we get into it, I found this really interesting. Um, I found this really interesting little um, uh, breakdown on um, on the web about numerology. Um, so. Let me show it to you. So this is, um, I don't think this is in my cheat sheets. I should probably make one for you. Um, so this, this gives you the breakdown of the process of the numbers. Um, so because we're at nine, this is like comparing, um, comparing it to baking cookies. So it's really, it's a really good resource to have. Um, so when you get to the ace of a card, it's like, hmm, I'm thinking I'm going to do something. I think I want to bake some cookies. And then um, number two is planning, so deciding what kind of cookies, yada yada. And so we're at number nine, which is like the cookies are done. We just need to cool, which is basically knowing the, knowing, knowing that you've already put in the work and you're pretty much ready to go. So nine is the fi final cardinal or root number in numerology, and has the highest vibrational frequency of any number that's not a master number. And the master numbers are 11, 22, and 
Uh, this is because on the journey from zero, nine is the culmination of the path before the numbers all flip to the, the double digits. One special characteristic is that nine retains its vibration no matter how you flip it. No matter what nine is multiplied by, when you reduce the final number by adding, um, which is the practice of numerology, it will always reduce back to nine. Conversely, when nine is added to any number and reduced to its root, it will always reduce to the original number as if nine didn't even happen. So um, I'm not that great with numbers and rounding up in numerology. I didn't have time to actually play with this principle, but I'm sure you can at home if you download the, um, the cheat sheets. Um, so, you know, five plus nine is 14. And then when you add four and one, you still get five. So it's as if you didn't even add uh, nine in the first place. So interesting. Um, it is a number of pure intellect and initiation. It's full of surprises. People with the number nine life path tend to be practical and get things done to a high degree of effectiveness. Um, they tend to connect with higher vibrations and inner wisdom more than the phys physical or material plane. Sagittarius is the ninth sign of the zodiac. And the nine energy leans more towards being a visionary and a dreamer with results that become all-encompassing trends or game changers. So when you're dealing with the number nine, it's, um, it's just a very powerful number. It's the culmination of everything that happened before it. Um, nine likes to be of service on a large scale through humanitarianism or imparting wisdom through meditation and soul searching. It is emotional and signifies understanding on a very deep level. It is infused with karma and the energy or culmination of culmination or fullness. So in that, um, you know, uh, in that all of these cards, all of the number nine cards are basically um, uh, dealing with a, they're almost at the point of, um, total completion and success um we'll start with uh, the wands so the santa muerte deck is really interesting because it doesn't always um it doesn't always line up with um with the rider weight system so um i got my little post-its ready to go sorry hermit you're not getting away this time so um there we go. So I like I wanted to start with this one because we could see um, how everything else pretty much differs. Um, so for the ones in Santa Muerte, your strength is to withstand adversity and your ability to truncate what is clearly useless and stale bring you to success and achievement of your project. Even if a period of cleansing, complete uh, complications, Protracted evaluations or adversity may slow down the process of expansion. You will manage to harvest the fruits of what you have sown. So, oh, there you go. It's um, it's a a lady um who is harvesting her crop, and toiling quite hard. It looks like. Um, so that kind of falls in line. Um, to a certain degree. Um, the the rider weight, which is generally the system I go by, um, and also the the Illuminati is very similar and inspired by it. Um, so this is the nine of wands in the um, rider weight, and generally, uh, you can see homeboy is like holding himself up. He's been through a lot, but behind him there there's basically evidence of all of his work in all of those wands so it's um the pause in the struggle the victory after persistence weariness preparedness strength in reserve um proud defense and resolve um also feeling a little vulnerable and cautious ready to move past pain being aware of obstacles and vigilance to maintain your position so this is the this is the card of someone who's um, who's really put a lot of work into where they they are in life, and they're you know 
it's tiring sometimes because it seems like a lot of people really want to tear you down and you just can't let them. And after a certain amount of time, it gets pretty exhausting. So that's kind of what that card signifies. And while I was, um, while I was reading about it, it was, it kind of seemed like almost like PT, having PTSD to a degree or another. Like it was really, you know, um, you know, weariness, preparedness and strength in reserve. Um, generally people who have been through trauma and survived, that is, um, that's like a characteristic and when um proud de proud defense is like most people would stand up proud and defend their position um but also the feeling vulnerable and cautious um being aware of obstacles and vigilance to maintain their position um like people with PTSD tend to have those characteristics except um like all of those characteristics that I just talked about, except like to the nth degree, they've taken it all the way down the road. Um, and it's, it's very extreme. It, I got some notifications on the Facebook, so I'm going to check in and see what's going on there. Just want to make sure that nobody's feeling left out. Um, in the meantime, here is the Tarot Illuminati. Uh, what do we got here? Yeah, dude is a proud warrior. He has really, um, he's really put in the work and he's looking over what he's accomplished and he's proud of it, which is very much a, a Nine of Wands um, characteristic. Um... Yeah, homeboy looks pretty freaking badass, actually. Um, all right, cool. So that's that. Um, we've looked at Santa Muerte. Um, let's see. Here we go. That is the Knight of Wands for the Patch Tarot. And it looks like... Like, it looks very fiery and a lot of energy, and that um, speaks to the um, the uh, the proud defense, preparedness, and strength. But let's look at the little white book for a second and see, see what it has to say. So, Nine of Wands shows a noble warrior flying downward with great strength, aiming his bow of reflection. Um described by the moon arrow towards the earth though tired after battle he is full of power the power of fire which rises again and again with determination and discipline no matter how much you have at your disposal the real strength comes from inner resolve true power is the power of internal change for change is the most ultimate form of stability ironic enough um it is by applying this endurance to your challenges that you succeed every time this card depicts the test of strength, which um, which is also uh, in line with the um, the rider weight um, interpretations that um, you can find in the uh, in the footnotes of the cheat sheets. You can find all of the sources that I compiled to make them. Um, uh, can you? Sh uh, it, uh, this card depicts a test of faith and asks the question, can you show your resilience and stand for what you believe in one more time? Though you may be tired, you must remain persistent. If you are able to draw on your inner strength, you can compete, complete your objectives and at long last, take time to rest. Look inward. The flames of your spirit will burn bright if you know where to direct your love. Be disciplined in your spiritual practice and your faith will carry you through and success will be yours. Pretty awesome. So that that also um, falls in line perfectly with the um, stuff we were talking about. Now I'm having a little bit of trouble reading. So I'm just gonna turn on my light here. I hope that doesn't mess mess up my shot too much. Um, cool. So that is actually much easier to read. Um, cool. So that's our patch tarot. Um, checking out the Yukioa.
All right, the light does look a little harsh, but meh, life is life. I need to be able to read for you guys, right? Cool. So, Yukioe. Cool. Let's get our little white book. Now, what I like about this book, um, or what about this deck, what I find is really interesting is it's not about the wands. It's more about the um, plants, um, the plants and the wildlife that are depicted in each card. Um, so let's see what this says. Uh, Lot of lotus leaves mingle with wild strawberries. The two diverse plants growing in such close proximity could overcome each other, bringing mutual destruction. Since the lotus is a water plant and the strawberry plant of the soil, a plant of the soil, one of them is out of its element. With proper cultivation, both will thrive. This is expectation of difficulties and challenges, awaiting tribulation, hidden enemies, deception, discipline, order, a pause, and a current struggle. This, um, I think that's really interesting. I like that. Uh, I like that description because um, if you if you look, let's let's go back to our writer weight here. If you look at him, he, it, it may very well be that this guy has come back home alive from battle because he did um, anticipate massive problems. And that's basically, you know, if you're planting two different plants um, that could compete against each other um, and you know the difficulties that you're, you're fully aware of the difficulties that lie ahead, then it's more likely that you'll succeed if you can plan for them and um, if you can plan to overcome them. So I like that a lot. That's really dope. And we learned something about strawberries and lotus. Let me just move this light a little bit. It's getting in my eyes. There. Alright, so I hope that's a little bit better. Oh, that was burning my eyeball a little bit. Okay, shh, we're good. We're good. Okay. Um, so that was the wands. Let me check all this we got. Yeah, it looks like we got all of the decks covered. Cool, moving right along. Um, the swords. So swords, everyone's favorite deck. It's really really what we all love to get in a reading and it's really interesting because swords represent um the air sign and intellectualism oh whoops i forgot um the egyptian tarot with the wands let's check that one out uh, all right so this this deck doesn't tend to really say much um, it says the golden scarab, protection, suspension, intuition of danger. So, yeah, <laughs> this deck has so much potential and I, you know, I'm glad I didn't pay too much for it. The, the artwork I think is really cool, but I would like some more expanded, um, definitions of that. Um, protection, suspension, suspension, what does that even mean? Um, intuition of danger. Um, it does seem to, it does seem to fall in line with the rest of them. So that's pretty cool. Um, all right. So like I said, moving right along to the swords. Um, one thing I think is really interesting is that all of the swords cards are supposed to be, um, the represent air in the mind, but they all seem to be so bad. Like what is so bad about being intellectual uh just it's, it's confusing all right so starting with the rider weight and even the tarot illuminati we can put those side by side um so swords represent suffering loss um being consumed by what ifs and worry doubt grief pain depression nightmares um nightmares may con contain clues to your healing though um your fear is valid, but it's kind of taking over. 
regret, a ravaged mind, worry and anxiety cause self-imposed misery, but tomorrow is a new day. And I think this is really the point of the card, is that um, you can see um, the girl is woken up from a nightmare, um, she's freaking the hell out, um, and you know, obviously because nightmares are pretty scary, but A, nightmares are not necessarily real and what's going on. And none of those swords in the picture are touching her. Not a one. Look on them close. Not a one is actually touching her. She's just worried that they will, and they really aren't. She doesn't, she doesn't actually have anything to be afraid of. Um, she's just more worried about what could happen in the card rather than what's actually happening. So um, that's something to keep in mind when this turns up in a spread. Um, in, and I think in order for it to actually turn into anything um, uh, valid and real to worry about, um, I guess you would look at the other cards um, surrounding it in the spread to determine that. Um, but, you know, there would have to be other factors involved to to turn worry into an actual problem. I think I think it was my father once who told me that you you really in life you never have anything to worry about. Cuz there are two categories of things that people worry about. People worry about things that they can't control. And if you're going to worry about things that you can't control, there's no point because you can't control them. So don't worry. And the other thing that people worry about is things that they can control. And if you can control it, and if you can do something about it, then absolutely do something about it. In fact, do everything you can about that situation and make everything... Do your absolute best and go to the limits to make sure that you have done everything possible that you can do to enhance your situation in a way that you want. Um, and if you can do something about your situation, absolutely do it. And if you can't do anything about it, then you can't do anything about it. So both of those circumstances make no sense to worry about. And I know that's really easy to say, really difficult to do, but there's wisdom in that. All right. Um, let's, let's move it. Let's move it on to something else. Um, I'm going to check out the... Yukio A Tarot. Um, let's see if anybody if anybody's talking to me. Oh, cool! Looks like Kelly Watson is in the building. All right, Kelly, what are you saying? What's up? I got 5G internet, but you wouldn't know it. All right. Can't wait. I can't catch the live, so we'll look forward to this. Oh, man. I was hoping that someone had some insights for me and uh, interpretation. But uh, no worries, Kelly Watson. I'm seeing you, seeing me. And if you can, make sure on YouTube when you find this, like, share, and subscribe. If... If we get up, God willing, if we get up to a thousand subscribers, then I can actually start live streaming um, straight to YouTube, which means that everybody will be able to see it, everybody will be able to share it, and I won't be actually locked to this Facebook group. Um, not that this is a bad thing, um, but, uh, you know, being that it's in my Facebook group, and the Facebook group is closed because... Um, you know, we all have families and we all have judgmental people in our lives and I just wanted to keep it safe for everybody in the group to be able to interact and post things and, you know, not be worried that, um, that someone in the group would attack them. This is a group of, uh, you know, love and respect and, um, and, you know, belief in the beyond, if you will. So, um, we just got to keep it chill and I don't... I don't need, you know, nobody needs anybody judgmental in their lives popping into the group and saying nasty things. So let's keep that to a minimum. But because of that, 
it's I don't think it's possible to actually share the videos beyond the group which is a little sad um, but hopefully with your love and support we can get enough subscribers on YouTube and we can just make it public and anybody can see it anybody can share it and we can all we can all vibe out one happy tarot family all right moving along the UKOA tarot um, yeah we got the uh, we got nine swords and I you know, honestly have <laughs> their drawings so I couldn't tell you what plant that is I couldn't tell you what bird that is which is kind of sad because they say that by the average um, by the t time an average 10 year old um, you know reaches 10 they can identify like a thousand brand logos but not one plant <laughs> or native to their native to their neighborhood all right so the um the nine of swords willow is the japanese flower of november the month in which nature turns towards cold rains and gray winter the swallows migrate towards happier and warmer climates patience and perseverance the japanese virtues of the willow are needed to overcome the sadness inherent in the nine of swords um, this means concern, quarrel, unhappiness, miscarriage, anxiety over a loved one, despair, and suffering. Oh, Jesus, swords. I swear to God. <laughs> That's pretty grim. Um, but let's, let's take another look at that. So, um, this talks about, um, Okay, so the willow is, um, it says the flower of November, nature turns cold, gray winter. So this, this basically, I guess, is the, um, the signifier of a cold, gray winter. It's kind of crummy. Even the swallows are taken off. So, um, but I guess, you know, even in winter, right? Winter isn't anything to worry about. You just need to be prepared and um, anticipate tough times. And that's why a lot of cultures have um, harvest festivals because you spend all year getting your crops together. And, you know, as, at harvest time, you know, you have a big party because you got a lot of food. But then after that, you're on rations because you have to get through the winter, right? So, um historically in a lot of cultures that was what they did so it makes a lot of sense because they know that you know you you have to store up your supplies in order to get through the winter so that makes a lot of sense um really cool interpretation um well let's look at the egyptian one because you know this is gonna be something i don't know if it's gonna make any dang sense or anything okay so this is the nine of swords in the Egyptian tarot um, the blades of Thoth Toth Thoth I don't know he needs to come down and uh, teach me how to say his name the way he taught sophistication and civilization to the people um, so the blades of Toth Thoth Thoth? I'll call him Thoth. Um, nightmares, anguish, suspicion, and bewilderment. Bewilderment. Um, so, so far as I know about... Well, that's weird, because that's not even Thoth. Thoth is the Ibis. Um, he's the Egyptian god with the Ibis head. And he, I remember that, because Ibis has a huge, long beak. And um, Thoth taught the Egyptians writing. So uh, the huge long beak, um, it reminds me of a pen. So that's how I remember what he looked like. So I guess when you get on Thoth's bad side, he throws down them, uh, he throws down them, them blades at you and that's a pretty bad situation. So, I mean, I, oh, I just crave some, some deeper meaning in that. Um, all right, uh, let's move it along to Patch. So Patch is, and I really have to hand it to the Spirit Science. These are really beautiful cards. Just, it's a thorn in my craw that they changed the numerology of the Major Arcana. 
Okay, so the Nine of Wands shows a noble warrior. Oh, wait. I'm still on wands. Duh. Okay, let's go to swords. Um, uh, the Nine of Swords exemplifies a mind descending into a state of cruelty. The mental chaos from the Eight has evolved to the point of causing not only mental but now emotional struggle, haunting the character with nightmares and visions of death and cruel truth. His state... This state, one finds depression, regret, anxiety, and nightmares as a reality. And that's, that's pretty, um, pretty in line with the, um, the, uh, the, the rider weight. This card shows a mind reduced to a very primitive instinct, indicating that just as the vulture tears into its prey with survival instincts, the ravaged mind tears apart all other energies in order to get what it thinks it needs. Damage, despair, and cruelty are the outcome of this mindset. Thus, the Nine of Swords itself brings awareness to the rich emotional trauma that exists in the world. This is not a bad card, simply one that describes the harsh realities that exist on this planet. And, oops, I dropped one. Ooh, sorry, guys. And um, that makes a lot of sense because, um, you know, we are living in rough... We are living in rough times. Um, I'm trying, you know, I started off the group um, on a political note, um, giving a hat tip to my native uh, brothers and sisters out in the world, um, in North America and everywhere, who have pretty much got the shit end of the stick, pardon my French, um, for hundreds, thousands of years. Um, even the Ainu, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but even the Ainu in Japan have really got the crap into the stick. In any case, I try to keep um, politics out of this, but at least in North America, things things have been getting to me recently. Um, I just I want to I want to preach peace, love, positivity, and respect for my fellow humans. But, you know, there's just such a huge group of people out there now who are not doing that. And, you know, we've got environmental crises, social, political crises. There's a lot to be worried about. So when the card talks about the environmental or the circumstantial conditions that um, cause the state of the world like that, like, it's very easy to see how that can cause nightmares and worry. Um to that degree. Um, I'm just trying to order the cards so that I know what's coming up next. And then I think we've covered all of them. Let's get into Santa Muerte. You know, I started it just now with Santa Muerte, but I think it's really um, more appropriate to end with Santa Muerte because it tends to... Uh, there's no, there's no um, larger book. Like, one moment... So up here, Patch Tarot has a big companion book, and um, Tarot Illuminati also has a big companion book, but um, Santa Muerte actually does not have a companion book, so um, it's hard to hard to know where they got their meanings from it seems to be mainly um a numerological um system uh but it's still a little bit sometimes i, I feel a little lost with it so this is a santa muerte um oh i hope you could see that okay so this is the book of patch book i did an unboxing in really terrible light with my uh laptop um with my laptop uh, camera and it's it was terrible so you really didn't get a a good view of what it looked like so it took forever to get here I think they lost my order but it's cool they're an independent um, company the pages are really nice it's pressed really well it's bound really nicely I, I paid a couple extra bucks to get the hardcover edition and mainly the book of patch um, and the patch tarot is uh, heavily based on the um, Kabbalah and Kabbalistic system. And then the complete guide to the tarot Illuminati is actually available in a PDF. But uh, I wanted to get the, the actual book. I, I don't know if it comes in hardcover. But it's really, really in depth. And I really appreciate this book and how, how in depth um, Kim Huggins goes 
with all of the cards. And this is a, um, a rider weight based system. So that's my plugs. I don't know, buy whatever you want to buy. I don't get any money for any of this, especially, especially because I'm not trying to be an influencer or anything like that. I just want to learn tarot. So let's see with, oh, I'm looking back in the patch book. So swords, let's keep it moving. All right. With the Nine of Swords, we have the preconditions for a possible crisis due to a period of enclosure and isolation. A seclusion well utilized, however, will enable new wisdom, new light, and new nourishment, which will enable the rebirth of our conscious and, our, and sustain our will, as well as limiting injuries, waste, ambiguity, and diffidence. Can you see that okay? Is that better? The sun is setting, so the lighting isn't as good as I would hope. Um, let me see. There we go. Okay, so it's more in the light now. I can move this. There. Sorry, I'm still learning. I'm not an influencer. I don't have one of those fancy LED lights. Um... And really, I'm just learning. I just got myself a tripod. It was pretty fantastic. I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. So let's move that back a little bit. There we go. This is the card. This is the card we were looking for. All right. So, um, act with strength and prudence, ensuring your ideas are well focused and directing all your strength in these. So this, I hope you can get a good look at it. It's a pretty wild looking card. It seems like, um, I don't know, to me at first when I was looking at it, it looked almost like a, um, uh, the, the, the wheel of the control. I don't even know. Is this a steering wheel on a boat? Um, but it does look like the, um, the little scully is, um, confined and enclosed, um, in this contraption on his head. Um, but like it said, going within and you can find your wisdom, which ties into the hermit, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, three more cards to go, everybody. We're getting through it. Um, all right, let's go back to the beginning again. Um, so what do we got next? The cups. This is an awesome card. This guy is like, this guy is pretty dope. He's pretty happy with himself. Oh crap, the guy on the uh, Illuminati one has a cod piece. Uh, we were learning about that in fashion history not long ago. And those cod pieces are typical of the uh, Northern Renaissance. And basically pants at the time were just two legs so dudes needed something to cover the middle, and they got pretty big and pretty fancy. I was saying a lot without saying anything. Um, so this guy must be from the Northern Renaissance, probably England, and I would guess um, 14 to 1500s. We'll see if my history teacher watches this, if I got that right. All right, so this signifies um, satisfaction, abundance, wishes fulfilled, material success, fullness beyond capacity, which is like, not in a bad way, but like, oh my gosh, I can't believe how lucky I am. This is amazing. Sharing good fortune as well, so it's not the miserly ways of the Four of Cups. Um, blessing, pride and achievement, almost a smug contentedness, but just don't be smug if you get this card. That's kind of mean. Um, caution against arrogance and self-indulgence. So this looks like the, um, the card of someone, you know, they put in a lot of work and now they're really successful and it can be very easy to get, um, to get smug and arrogant about it. So that is your caution with this card. Um, obviously whether it has a positive or negative, um, connotation depends on the cards around it in your spread. Um, all right, so let's go Yukioe. -E. 
So this is just nine sake cups. Um, what do we got? Oh, we got a carp. So that is our, sorry, this light. I'll get it right eventually, guys. All right, so this is a carp swimming up the stream. Let me see how this is looking over here. Carp swimming up the stream. Um, uh, swimming vigorously upstream is a symbol of willpower, strength, and longevity. Success, advantage, well-being, abundance, good health, and difficulties surmounted. Um, so I guess this, if you start with the wands, then this is the natural progression to that. Um, all of the difficulties that you had seen in the wands are now in the cups being absolutely demolished and um, overcome. So this is a great card to get. Um, and obviously carp swimming upstream indicates like a lot of hard work getting put into whatever the outcome, the successful outcome was. Um, let's go to... Let's take a trip to Egypt now. Um, I don't know what I did with the... Oh, there it is. Okay. So... There we go. The cups in Egypt. Um, the Knot of Isis. Uh... Maybe they're talking about the Ankh? I'm not entirely sure. Um, not of Isis. Satisfaction, physical well-being, positive energy. All right. True to the Egyptian deck from Los Carabeo that's very vague, um, but still um, definitely in line with the, the other um, descriptions we've seen so far. This one, oh no, that's the pentacles. There we go. This is our cups. That's pretty rad. It almost looks like there's a, uh, a tree of life in that depiction, which there very well could be on purpose because this deck is so heavily um, influenced by the, um, um, by the, the, the Kabbalah. So Patch sits within her aura experiencing a sense of complete success and happiness. Um, there is a perfection of the moment and the allowance of emotional flow to course through her entire body of consciousness. She enjoys a space of harmony, trust, love, optimism, and satisfaction for all her dreams have come true. And she is truly at peace within and without, which is something that hasn't seemed to be mentioned so far. Um, in at least in the um, in the Rider Waite style, so this I like how the card does um, depict it, our aura um, and what is within and without is in harmony and balance in a positive way. This card is a wish card that indicates dreams coming true. Whatever you dreamed of, this card expresses a glorious yes to having and living this dream. Not only is the dream possible, but probable if you cultivate the, the light and happy feelings in each moment internally, as doing so will support the realization of this dream externally in the world. All you have to do is say yes to the moment, yes to the feeling, and yes to your love. Take some time for you. You deserve it. So this is actually kind of uh, reflecting on um, the energy of the hermit, which we'll get to in a moment, um, of like feeling the positivity with from within and without um, and balancing that and going within to find your happiness all right and let's see uh, let's see what Santa Muerte is talking about here all right and my friend Gabrielle hi Gabrielle says happy Beltane happy Beltane to all of my Wiccans up in the house um, I'm not, I haven't done my research. I don't know what Beltane is yet, but it's definitely the new moon in Taurus, which I don't know about you guys, but I am really feeling good about that. Um, I'm between semesters in school and, you know, um, I just, you know, finally caught enough rest, balanced myself out and started to get back into the swing of things. I'm feeling fantastic and new moon in Taurus has got me feeling great. Um... Cool, so, Santa Muerte Tarot, isn't this great? 
Hidden treasure. Revealed treasure. The Nine of Chalices takes us far away through a slow and wave-like movement similar to that of the sea, to maternity or gaining emotional happiness or an ideal. Only by throwing an anchor and stopping this movement can the propos can the propositional push of this arcana be altered and cause secrets, augments, or difficulties to emerge. Wait, what? Yeah, uh, oh, okay, okay, so basically it's saying keep it moving and you'll find what you're looking for, um, and only by dropping anchor and stopping the movement are you going to have problems, so follow with full sails and without fear, you've reached victory but it's not yet the moment to stop and dock, so that's pretty interesting, so, you know, keep it moving. There's more treasure to be found out there in the wide open ocean. Very cool. Um, still in keeping with the rest of the tarot that we've mentioned, but with a spin of its own, which I think is really... Re that one was really interesting. Um, Alright, one last minor arcana with the pentacles. And then it is time for our major... All right, uh, this is probably one of my favorite cards. This, uh, the Nine of Pentacles, um, shows a woman kind of living her best life, you know, almost like a Disney movie talking to the birds. She's surrounded by, like, nature and abundance and material wealth and everything like that. And it just, um, I really love this card. I just, I love the vibe of it, everything. Um... And I remember um, my trusty book. So I'm not sure if you guys have seen it yet. I had to buy a second copy because it is just trashed and falling apart. But when I was nine, my sister gave me a tarot book. And this is it. This is, <laughs> this is my original tarot book. Um, and this is my... My new copy of it. Um, this one has actually been the book that uh, when I get my memory jogged, I remember the phrases from this book. So um, this book talks about, uh, for the Nine of Cups, it's the solitary enjoyment of life. It's, you know, you're doing it on your own, it's okay, you know? And I tend to be like that, a little solitary, so I connect with this card a lot. Um, it's... Um, and it also kind of like the solitary uh, nature of this card kind of is reminiscent of the hermit. So, um, solitary enjoyment, independence, wonder, gain, manifesting after hard work, patience brings reward, inheritance, material well-being, inner security, knowing you're in control, grace, and self-confidence. Um, I really love the woman depicted here. She's like just really classy. And of course with the uh, Tarot Illuminati there's an Asian theme to that. Now I'm slightly bothered by the t Tarot Illuminati's um, tokenization of Asian cultures because they seem to mishmash Japanese and, and Chinese culture where it suits them. Um, if you look she seems to be wearing a Japanese influenced kimono but her hairstyle and the the actual colors seem to be kind of Chinese, so it's like kind of here and there. That, you know, that's like confusing Canada and America. We don't do that. Um, in any case, though, it is a beautiful card, and her... Uh, is that a falcon? That's a falcon. Her falcon is really badass, so I just dig this card. So that's what this guy is about, or this lady is about, is the solitary enjoyment of the good things in life. And... Um, uh, you know, having your material uh, uh, projects come to fruition in a material uh, sense. Um, let's, let's do our Yukioe here. Um, here we go. Um, a favorite Japanese activity of spring is to walk among the fruit trees. The Nine of Pentacles depicts Bows decked in seasonal bloom. Accomplishment, discernment, discretion, prudence, material well-being, and love of nature. Um, 
Wow, yeah, beautiful card. Now, and that's like very, um, very in line with the, uh, with the deck. Oh, amazing. I didn't even get to see that, but um, my girl Ruth was tuning in. I'm sorry I missed you, Ruth. You know I love you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that you stopped by. Um, and I hope uh, I hope you're getting something out of this. One of the cool things, um, one of the cool things about uh, doing this podcast or video blog or whatever you want to call it, is that you know, like if you're interested in reading but you don't want to see this old mug, you can always put it on in the background and like clean the house, do the dishes. Um, I don't know, do wrench your bike. <laughs> I don't know, put up a shelf um, and you're still learning at the same time which is one of my favorite activities if uh, we're going to get down to it really love learning and whether it's tarot or whatever um, okay cool so we got the Yuki OA let's get on <laughs> let's see what the Egyptian tarot has to say um, this is the nine we got a cobra in there in the eye of uh Eye of Horus, so that's pretty badass. Um, the power of Atom. Um, shrewdness, caution, seeing both sides of something, ambiguity. Um, okay, not sure where they got that from. If anybody has any ideas, um, I've always wondered, like, because this is the type of card where, like, if I memorize these meanings pretty well of of all of the cards, um, which would be my goal, um, to, re to, to memorize them without actually seeing them. If I memorize this meaning, it doesn't even really matter what's on the card. Um, it matters the vibe that I'm getting off of it. Right. And now I've never been one to read tarot cards just strictly that way, because I think that there's, um, a lot of work, um, and synchronicity that is in the cards. So I think it's important to have like a foundation and know at least some of what you're looking at um but with a deck like the egyptian deck it's it's just a mystery like maybe there's a book out there but what do you guys think like what do you suggest should i like can i even do readings with this deck if like the meanings are so vague and kind of it seems arbitrary let me know, hit me up on Twitter or Facebook or any of the different media, um, comment down below, which is what they do on, on YouTube, comment down below, uh, like, and subscribe, make me an influencer. Just kidding. Um, but let me know, like, how do you, do you guys, would you guys be reading a deck with, that's that vague? It almost reminds me of playing cards on Leo Normand. Um, so let me know. Hit me up and let me know what you think. Um, cool. So there's that. Let's get into patch. Uh, oh, patch is like this. This is like very, very, um, very rider weight. Um, and she's got flowers and stuff. I love this drawing. It's so cute. Gives you the right vibe. Um, on the Nine of Discs, we see a bird perched upon the hand of, of of a patch who stands in a blossoming and fertile garden. Here she experiences the flourishing of material uh, gain and tremendous levels of gratitude for the luxury she has accomplished. Um, peace and a satisfaction are experienced with all who enter into this beautiful sacred space which manifested through the consistent application of nurturing energy which kind of reflects back to the wands um, because in the wands it was um, mentioned that you need um, sustained sustained force sustained um, energy and um, work to um, overcome the things that uh, the obstacles that were indicated in the, the wands. Um, the nine of discs is about complete manifesting of all you've worked so hard to achieve. After the effort of planting seeds and tending to their growth, you now have the pleasure of witnessing the flourishing of your brilliantly colorful garden. Your hard work is paid off, but it wasn't really so hard, was it? The plants, beautiful flowers and fruits practically grew themselves. Okay, not so much, um, but I guess it depends on how, 
if you really enjoy gardening, then the hard work that goes into gardening or even farming, um, as indicated on these cards, is, isn't going to seem like work. But just because it doesn't seem so doesn't mean that it is not so. Uh, so all three of these cards have artwork that's very similar. Um, so check that out. Compare, contrast. It's all really beautiful art. So get a load of that. And then we'll move it right along. We're getting up to our major arcana and almost closing, almost ready to close out the podcast. Thanks for sticking with me for so long. I quite enjoy doing this, even though, man, it's hard to get subscribers and stuff to listen to me yammer on for so long. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> All right, so, uh, Pentacles. With the nine, okay, this guy, this guy, I'm not even sure what's going on in this card. It's a really cool looking card, but I'm not sure what is really going on there. Those are skulls, but also like penta, penta, yeah, there's like a, a pentagon there and a square and a something else. So I'm not really sure. There's like leaves and stuff. Um, man, this, this, this deck, I would really love to have an expand book for. Absolutely. I really want to get into this artist's head. Um, with the Nine of Pentacles, we've reached the maximum expansion thanks to the long-sightedness and thorough, continual, and regular movement towards development, success, and attaining new conquests. Nevertheless, we cannot continue to expand endlessly or we will risk being suffocated by ourselves and what we have attained. So I guess um, the the scully that's kind of uh, looking over calm or overwhelmed is that way because he's, um, this is like the, the outward, most outward apex of expansion. Um, properly evaluate the limits within you which you can expand and you will manage to realize and consolidate even beyond what you can see and touch. Very cool. All right, we are at we are at the last card of the night. The Hermit. This should bring all of it together. The um all of the different uh interpretations kind of come back to this um i really enjoy how the patch tarot is a little bit different i guess i should do something like that because uh from what i could see it was a little difficult to see it um there we go um cool so the hermit stands alone at, a, at the mountain peak old and wise with a light that illuminates the path for himself and those behind him Solitude afforded him the inner wisdom to light the torch, which now casts light on the path ahead, and which in turn allows him to show the initiate the way. Scaling mountains is no easy task, so only those who dare are curious, intrepid, adventurous, and fearless enough can reach him. This card signifies a meditative urge to escape the bustle and distractions of everyday life to reconnect with our innate inner wisdom, like retreating to a forest to listen to the four elements tell their stories. Sometimes we gain insight from meditation, but other times we seek out a counselor, mentor, or spiritual advisor. If progress is the goal, then wisdom is the path. Sometimes we can find it on our own, sometimes we need help, and there is no shame in either. Spiritual power... Oh, whoops, that should, that should have been a bullet point, that first one. Um, so, there we go. Uh, spiritual power overcomes material power. Spiritual strength over animal desires and love over hate. Um, wait a minute, no. That's from, okay, I messed that up. I'm going to fix that. Don't worry. <laughs> Silent counsel, receiving wisdom from above, dreams, family members, ancestors, spirit, or a mentor. Um, retreat from the outside world while si simultaneously moving inward to find your own light, inner standing. Um, and that was a word that I got from the, the patch tarot. Um, 
A journey is necessary to gain knowledge, keeping a dream journal or grimoire in self-realization. Alone, aloneness, being alone but not lonely, reflection, connecting with what truly matters in life, maturity, understanding, the burden of knowledge, retreat or withdrawal from people, situations or the rat race, or withdrawal from uh, relationships. I was checking in to make sure I didn't miss any messages like before. I mean, I'm trying to get a conversation happening, but it's really hard to do that while yammering my face off to try and teach something and uh, and also checking for messages. So please bear with me. Um, and I hope, you know, you guys can share this and stuff and, um, and it'll be a, a useful resource um, to people um, the past the live stream. I do quite enjoy live streaming, but if, uh, if, if, it, if, you know, people are learning from the repost, good on you. I'm cool with that as well. Let's just learn. Um, all right. So the hermit also indicates the innermost, innermost part of ourselves where we hide our secrets, careful reflection before action. So we have to get into that part of ourselves. Um, before we can get um, into the path of, um, uh, before we can get real on the path of uh, uh, enlightenment and knowledge, right? I'm trying to get some light on in here. Ugh, whatever, we're good. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's that. Um, Analyzation of the present and past in search of deeper meanings and patterns, inner healing. It's the card of truth, stillness, calm, guidance, um, mentorship, solitude, meditation, discretion, and awareness. So I've seen a couple typos on, on my cheat sheet, my patented cheat sheet. So I'll make sure that I fix that for you guys um, this evening. So... Um, also I made them password protected because at the bottom is my resources list and I really do, do um, believe in giving uh, credit where it's due. So, um, you know, thanks to secret of the tarot, .com, tarot revealed by Fenton Smith, tarot companion from Porter, tarot Bible from Bartlett, um, mastering tarot by gray tarot revealed by gray. Uh, Tarot New Handbook for the Apprentice by Connolly and the Book of Patch by du du to the Book of Patch. <laughs> and that is available through Spirit Science. Um, so you can Google them. So that is the Hermit card. And we can take a look at what the rest of these books have to say about it. All right. So the hermit in the patch has entered into a deep meditation deep in the woods. He is secluded and far from civilization, which no, can no longer affect him due to the distance between him. He goes inwards and becomes at peace with himself, for the chaos of others can cause a muddled head. The hermit sits excuse me, silently with his staff and egg and wrapped by a serpent, symbols of the nurturing seed of his story that he is cultivating as he walks the path. He is approached by several energies, depicting that which seeks his illumination and his wisdom. The hermit is a call to get out of the way of whatever situation or business that is going on in your life, seclude yourself from the outside world, and cultivate your understanding through the power of meditation. You have everything you need within you, and within is where you must go in order to transcend whatever you may be facing at this moment. This card stands for the illumination and the wisdom of the heart. Now, I love this. Man, I love Patch Tarot. I can't even lie. These cards are just so awesome. The colors are beautiful. They're just wonderful. Wonderful deck of cards. Okay, let's take it to Egypt and see if they have any insight for us. Um, now, I guess, like, I do, I do get down on this deck of tarot cards a lot, but in my own defense, I really do appreciate Egyptian mythology, so that's the reason why I got them, and the, the theme of the papyrus and the traditional uh, Egyptian drawings, I just find is really interesting, so that's why I got it, um, even though 
you know, the, the book is weird. Like, maybe I just need an expanded book. Maybe it's out there somewhere. Let me know in the comments, if you will. Um, all right. The Hermit. Prudence. The experience acquired through the light of intelligence and of prudence. The armor of the sage. Wisdom, prudence, solitude, research, renunciation, discretion. So I guess renunciation is one word that I kind of... Uh, was drawn to there and that could be um you know uh getting away from it all and like uh renouncing you know the the city even because i think this card really goes speaks to you know getting out of the hustle and bustle of everyday life and um and going within to find knowledge or even even going without but i find that um when i was growing up um one of the the small blessings that my mom could afford for us was um, a week at the cottage every year. Um, and it, I think it was like usually the last week of July or something like that. And, um, you know, as after I, I grew up and moved out, it was probably one of the, the biggest things I missed because, you know, getting out of the city uh, helps to reset you. Um, and, and, and getting out to even go camping and like, um, sit with the the fire beside the water breathing in the clean air with your bare feet on the dirt is just one of the most cleansing feelings out there and uh you know I think the last time I was able to do that it was only three days and prior to that I was at a cottage for five and I really think like you need seven full days to wash the city out of your system and be prepared to come back and get into it um and there is like a um a catharsis and you get to listen to your inner wisdom while you're hypnotized by that fire um it's really really great and it just reminds me that of the the card reminds me of that feeling of um getting away to uh getting away in order to understand what you're going to come back to, I guess, is a good way of putting it. All right, let's see what Yukioe is saying. Um, <coughs> almost done. Bear with me. All right. The Hermit. An older man wanders across a mountainous landscape. Wearing a black cloak, he could be a practitioner of Zen, a major sect of Japanese Buddhism. The mystical school of Zen teaches Satori, enlightenment, can be reached in a number of ways. The important thing is to dedicate all of one's being to attaining Satori. The hermit carries no books. His way is to learn through direct experience. He smiles in merriment. That he does. <laughs> Just looking at the card now. Um, many Zen lessons rely on paradox practical jokes, and even violence as a way of loosening the intellect from its habitual way of seeing. A sudden blow or an impossible, seemingly nonsensical statement from the master can bring a flash of Satori when the student sees reality without pre preconceptions or presumptions. The hermit carries a bamboo staff. Bamboo is traditionally the sign of luck and resilience in Japan, and it can bend in a wind without breaking. In his hand, he carries a paper lantern. Upright meanings are counsel, knowledge, solicitude, prudence, discretion, vigilance, circumspection, self-denial, withdrawal, solitude, esoteric knowledge, tendency to withhold emotion, and failure to face facts. I'm not sure about failure to face facts. I don't understand that. But everything else seemed to be pretty um, in line. Especially um, prudence was another word that came up a lot in the, um, in the Egyptian tarot. So, all right. And I guess when it comes down to it, no matter what, um, what tarot system you're uh, looking at, the major arcana are always going to have more or less the, um, the same meanings universally um, because, you know, uh, they're based on archetypes and archetypes are, uh, speak to a deeper truth within our subconscious. Um, that goes across cultural boundaries, across, um, you know, uh, uh, 
you know, what kind of schooling you might have had or anything like that. It goes beyond education. Archetypes speak to um, something deep down inside of us. So each each tarot system, uh, though their minor arcana or the pip cards may uh, differ in their meanings, the major arcana will always kind of have like a um, the same kind of thread through each through each deck for each major arcana card. Um, so when you think of a hermit, bam, you don't need to think about that. You know exactly what it's kind of meaning, and so. Um, you have other other cards, even like the um, the chariot or the tower, may not be as um, obvious right away. Um, so study is a good idea, but even still, when you think about it, you still kind of got um, the main point of the card. So last but not least, we're going to finish with Santa Muerte's Hermit. He represents a positive crisis to deal with and to relinquish to. I don't know what a positive crisis means. Um, a slow but profound evolution in a rather long period of silence and removal, where at times it is necessary. Um, sorry, I just lost myself. Uh, a slow but profound evolution in the rather long period of silence and removal, where at times it is actually in the deepest darkest, we dis rediscover our own light and acquire wisdom. This card also represents a paternal archetype, a wise figure, prudent master, who functions for us as a guide and transitory figure, ready to illuminate our journey. An excess of isolation, however, can bring with it a certain slowness and ability to be able to develop certain latent talents or a period. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, a period of stasis and ab abnegation. Um, take the time necessary for your actions, evaluating what you need to renounce, what you should remove from yourself in order to leave a situation that is placing you in difficulty. So across all of the tarot decks, um, the hermit still retains its meaning. So, um, which is basically, you know, um, kind of renouncing what's around you, uh, going within or just getting help from somewhere. Um, generally, the hermit speaks to getting help from within, but it can also mean getting help from without, um, whether it's like a, um, a therapist, a doctor, um, maybe not necessarily a doctor, this is more on spiritual levels, but like a therapist or um, a shrink or your pastor or whatever, it deals with like um, larger issues um, of spiritual issues. And, you know, the wands... Um, you know, steady force must be applied. Sometimes a, a pause in the struggle, but being aware of your uh, obstacles in order to beat them, kind of like um, the hermit ties into that because you you really do need to get that wise um, uh, perspective before you go into um, your struggle. Um, and um, let's see what else. So the cups. The cups are speaking to, um, you know, the positive outcomes, um, perhaps the, the, the wisdom of the hermit, um, uh, uh, helped with that. Um, the pentacles, um, I think the wisdom of the hermit got that material, um, success and it also did speak to solitary, um, enjoyment. So that also reflects in the hermit. And then the swords, that is a picture of a woman alone in bed and having a nightmare. And there's nothing more lonely out there than a nightmare, isn't there? Um, we, we have those alone. In any case, that wraps up um, this May 4th uh, New Moon in Taurus 2019 edition of Familiar Tarot Study Group. Uh, thank you for making, this, uh, um, for making it this long if you did. Um, thank you for coming along at the journey with the, all of the different tarot decks. Uh, once again, that's Santa Muerte from Los Carabeo, the Yukioe from U.S. Games, um, Patch Tarot from Spirit Science. Uh, this is the uh, Iridescent uh, Rider Weight, which I got on eBay for like $8. It's in there. And... Los Carabeos Egyptian Tarot. Um, 
yeah, uh, the books that I highly recommend, once again, uh, Complete Guide to Tarot from e Eden Grey was the first book I ever started with. Um, and Complete Guide to Tarot Illuminati from Kim Huggins is an excellent, excellent read. It's almost like reading a story. And if you like uh, Kabbalah, The Book of Patch is also a really great read. Um, so those are the books, some of the books that I'm working with. The rest you can find in the, uh, the footnotes to my, uh, my, my cheat sheets. And that's it. That's everything. Thank you so much for coming along with me to this, through this journey of the tarot. And we shall see you at the next new moon in, uh, June for the tens and oh my gosh see i this is why i do this the tens and the wheel of fortune Ooh, that's an excellent card all right thank you so much for coming along and thanks for being familiar